Welcome to Home Gym History, produced by Garage Gym Radio. My name is Rob, and I'm joined tonight by Jen Thompson. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. It's so nice to have you here because this is Home Gym History, and you might be the first history maker who regularly uses a home gym that I've had on. i got to think about it. I've had a couple people on. So it's... uh, (laughs) It's pretty cool, and that's what we're going to get into tonight, listeners. If you're unaware, Jen Thompson has 75-plus records in powerlifting. She has an illustrious career in powerlifting that's still going strong, and she also has a home gym, as I mentioned, so we'll get into that and the history of her home gym. And then, if you haven't noticed, Jen is a female, and there have been a long storied history of very strong women, and... She is undoubtedly, in my opinion, one of the strongest people on earth. But being a woman, I think there's some really cool historical connections with being a very powerful woman at that. So with that said, Jen, if you'd indulge me, I just have a couple little promotional messages for the listeners. Sure. So Home Gym Con, Jen, if you didn't know, was the first annual meeting of home gym owners. It occurred just this past April in French Lick, Indiana, and it'll occur again, I'm happy to announce listeners, next April, the last weekend in April, to give it a little more distance from some other conventions and things. So it's the last weekend in April 2024, and if you missed it this past year, or if you came out and you had a great time, please come on out to Indiana to Home Gym Con 2024 by going to www.homegymcon.com. I'll be recording some live podcasts there again, just like this past year. You'll see lots of equipment from some of the leading manufacturers of home gym equipment, and you can get your hands on it and try it out before you decide to purchase it. And of course, you can meet the people that you interact with online in person, which is a really Really nice thing. So Home Gym Con 2024. Now getting into tonight's episode, I was thinking through your career, Jen, and I was trying to pick a point, like where's a good jumping off point? And because <laughs> you, you've done a lot. Uh-huh. So I thought instead of just like starting at the very beginning, when's the first time you touched a weight, we'll get there. We'll fast forward and rewind through your life if you don't mind. But your first powerlifting meet, I find to be fascinating <laughs> because correct me if I'm wrong, you set a bunch of records the very first time out. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. It's up in Detroit, Michigan, 1999. Yeah. So, you know, were you just going for your PRs at the time, trying to do a great job, or did you have an inkling that these records were there? I didn't really know anything about powerlifting. Like, I'd been, lift, you know, you have to remember back then we didn't have the media that we have now. Yeah. Um, so I'd been training in a gym, our home gym, with a bunch of dudes for... <laughs> several years <laughs> and uh we found, and I knew like I knew I was getting strong so I was getting as strong as some of the guys in the gym but like at the time like there was like bodybuilding or there was like fitness were kind of the big things I really I wasn't interested in either one of those and we we just happened to fall onto a powerlifting bench press competition on our honeymoon in California so I was like also this looks really a fascinating cool. point. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, this looks really cool. I think I can do this. And so we looked up the records and my husband's like, dude, you're like doing more than the American record in our gym right now. <laughs> this is just like everyday life. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no way. Um, so we, so yeah, so we took some time and that the very first one was more, I just felt like a learning curve. Um, you know, yeah. back then it was all quick lifting. There was no mm-hmm. raw so I showed up and I'm like, what the heck are these people wearing? <laughs> like, know. this is so bizarre. These people are walking around like mummies and they yeah, look like yeah. they're in pain. The bench shirts and everything. Uh, yeah. And um, I like learned how to deadlift like the night before because we just didn't even no do way. that. Yeah. So, oh, um, that's so I kind of just went into it just like I knew I was close to the records on the bench, you know, um, but it was I needed to cut weight for the first time to like meet mm. a weight class and then I didn't even have like a wrestling singlet, you know, I didn't even know what that was. And so it was just really, we were just kind of going to to have fun and figure it out. That's phenomenal. It reminds me of like a, whatever, a superhero kind of discovering their powers. Like, wait a minute, yeah. what? Like, I, I'm really good at this? So. Oh, I almost so found cool. out in the squat with like 185 oh, pounds. Oh, <laughs> jeez. 
Well, I mean, I haven't competed in a powerlifting event, but I mean, I, I've spoken with enough people and had enough powerlifters on the podcast to recognize that it's a very different ballpark than just lifting in your gym. So I can imagine the learning curve there. Um, but you don't really know what squatting below parallel is. Yeah, like exactly. You get into one of those competitions, you're like, still no, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I heard you mention on... Um, give a shout out to freedom fitness ashton did a great oh, interview with yeah. you i love ashton i and saw his reports about the um the the gym was it gym home gym con. Saying, home gym yeah, con. Yeah. hey yeah, I who's met the famous the who's the famous athlete from french lick indiana do you know oh that's larry bird oh, okay <laughs> absolutely it's uh, he's the second best thing in french lick indiana to home gym con no i'm just <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure larry bird is like the whatever holds the keys to the town hall or whatever it is <laughs> yeah. he's he's uh there's signage as you drive in home of larry bird you know mm, birthplace of larry so bird so. so you could not not know <laughs> yeah yeah it's a small town and but the resort is amazing it's humongous oh, and it it's great. been around for a long time so i was fascinated hmm. with the historical content all over the resort right. there's a little trolley like an old-time trolley that goes around it and i don't know i could go on and on it was a really cool. nice time so if you're not doing anything last weekend of uh, April next year, you're welcome to come. All right. We'll see. <laughs> um, but in any case, this first meet of yours, you come in there, you you take first place. Not only that, but you you set some records. What was the competition like? Do you remember? I know this is 1999, but I, it occurred to me, like, if you had ne if you've been lifting for a while and going to – you know, powerlifting meets, and then this girl comes out of nowhere and just rocks it. I, I mean, were did any competitors speak to you that you remember? Did you interact Not with them at all? Not a whole lot. And, but you have to remember back then, there wasn't like a lot of women doing it either. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there might have been maybe one or two other ones there. Okay. Um, but then there was a coach that came up to me. He's like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. like. <laughs> he recognized. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. You're great. This is what we need to do. <laughs> and he That's kind of cool. like gave me like the cliff notes of like powerlifting and what I needed to do and where we needed to go and how I needed to change some things up. So um that was that was really nice. That is very cool. So then going forward from there, did you have a coach or did you just stick with you know, learning with the people you work out with, your husband yeah. and your gym and everything. Yeah, my husband and I just pretty much figured it out. I mean, back then, like, there was no online coaching. There was no exactly. YouTube. Like, you looked in the back of a magazine to figure out when the competitions <laughs> were and you nailed yeah. in your entry form, you know, exactly. the good old days. So, like, you know, we really the, our only resource really was Muscle and Fitness magazine. Mm -hmm. You know, we would look the workouts for there and – um and yeah, me, my husband's got a medical background, so it certainly helped that he understood like how the body moves. And he was also a collegiate wrestler um, okay. in college, and um, he lifted weights in the army and the military. So he had some sort of background, although it wasn't powerlifting per se. But we we did a lot of trial and error stuff. But I kind of think that was the fun part, you know, yeah. was trying things. No, if that doesn't work, we can't do this. Okay, let's try this, you know, and trying different workouts. We tried like the Ed Cohn, Ryan Philippi workout one time. And, I spoke with Ed about that. Yeah. Yeah. And he, I think he, he said like they just put his name on it. It wasn't even really his workout or something. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That's, but, uh, um, it was hard hard to do. It was hard to keep up with it. But I mean, so yeah, we just kind of mucked around and kind of fine tuned. I, I think I posted on my Instagram the other day. We just like we we post like our uh, our programming like on a we print it out and post it in the gym, and um, it was version thirty. Yeah, <laughs> nice. We just kind of keep tweaking it over and yeah. over and over again. <laughs> I'll drop a link, listeners, in the description for Ashton's uh, gym tour of. Mm -hmm. Jen's gym because I remember seeing the computer in your gym uh, so yeah. that people can kind of like log into their mm -hmm. program and everything which is I thought to myself that if you have visitors coming over that's a pretty good idea so yeah I we need used to, to have uh, just a bunch of chart paper that <laughs> yeah. my husband like you know made a grid out of and we would just record I mean I still have them I probably have hundreds of charts in our that closet before we we got savvy and upgraded to technology <laughs> i can't help but 
keep my notebooks and things and <laughs> I don't know if I've ever looked back at them all that much but they're I can see them they're sitting up in a pile up in the rafters yeah. of my basement I don't know it's just one of those things so right. I get it I totally get it as far as wrestling um you know there's been a long history of strong women and wrestling and I actually before we hit record I brought up the great Sandwina and she, her father, when she was raised, being raised, she was a classic strong woman during the performing days, turn of the century. But the reason I bring her up is that not only is she one of the strongest women in history, but she, her father would have her wrestle uh, different men and would offer 100 marks to anyone who could beat his daughter. And that was that was kind of one of the first like kind of circus ish performance. Mm -hmm. Like if you can beat my daughter, I'll give you a hundred marks. And yeah. she ended up defeating a man, Max, who was so impressed that they ended up dating and getting married. So oh, that's how she met her husband. Man right there, able that's to take right. the loss and then turn it into a life partner. <laughs> exactly. And she would go on to lift him overhead in her act for many many years. Have That's you ever awesome. attempted to lift someone over your head, husband or no, otherwise? I've, I've bench pressed them. There you go. So you've bench pressed some people? Yeah, my, my husband. Oh, you've bench pressed your husband? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Jen, you don't know how much <laughs> this means to uh, our conversation here. Because that is a direct link to most of the turn of the century strong women. <laughs> a common theme was to basically make a spectacle out of being stronger than men. Because... Right. You just mentioned how in 1999, it was just you and a couple women at this mm -hmm. powerlifting meet. Well, rewind the clock 100 years in, sure. you know, 1900, 1910, 1915. There were even less women lifting, I'm sure you can imagine. So mm -hmm. that was like a mind-boggling thing to see a woman lift a man over her head. So that was just a common thing, not just with uh, the great Sanduina, who I brought up, but with many others and fast forward. I mean, there's uh, one of my favorites is uh, Athleta Van Huffelen. I'll mention with lifting a man overhead because she didn't just lift them overhead. She lifted three men on her shoulders and then would do a dance. Huh. So, you know, <laughs> nice. I'll just lay that down for you as a, a possible next feat of strength, but getting back to your actual career in powerlifting. So you, you had this meet, you get some great advice from a coach there. You and your husband start working through different programs and things and moving forward. You know, before that, how long have you been lifting weights? You mentioned that you and some dudes were lifting weights at the home gym. Yeah, I probably like, well, probably t two years, like seriously. Like I okay. kind of muddled around a little bit in the gym before, but very inconsistently. Mm. Um, so probably a couple years before that, where I was actually like st sticking it to it pretty regularly. Um, you know, in college I was working two jobs and, you know, putting myself through school. And, um, so, you know, it wasn't easy to <laughs> maintain yeah. uh, any sort of schedule really. So, um, it wasn't till kind of after that, that I really started focusing on it. I enjoyed it and I enjoyed mm. the, um, camaraderie with everyone that came over and lifted and, um, I enjoyed seeing, you know, all the, all the newbie gains, you know, Yeah, I was definitely lifting way more weight than I ever thought you know, possible. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, well, where's the limit here? This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So for a couple years there, you're, you're learning the ropes in the gym and lifting. If we keep rewinding the clock, some um, athletically, you were a runner, you ran with your mm -hmm. dad. I heard you yeah. mention it, some other podcasts and things. Did you do any other sports growing up prior to that? No, I played low volleyball for the school. Okay. Um, in um, in our high school, we had this really cool class. After um, ninth grade PE, you could take this class called Marine Fitness, oh. and um, it was almost I feel like a early CrossFit maybe type uh, um, wow. a thing where we um, you competed against other schools in the Marine Fitness like PE test. So we had to um, I think do a hundred sit ups in two minutes. We had to do thirty pull ups. I think a hundred push-ups, military push-ups. And there was like a standing broad jump and a run. Um, and so basically this class was like, we did, um, all those things. We did road climbs, we did stadium runs, you know, we did yeah. all this sort of, um, just fun, 
stuff. And so yeah. I took that every semester in high school. <laughs> <laughs> it was me and one other girl in the class. Just the, all- uh, you just thought it was fun? What attracted oh, you to I enjoyed yeah, I enjoyed pushing myself, enjoyed okay. like pushing myself harder and harder and seeing yeah. the gains, you know, and it was, you know, sort of, I sadly, like it was cool. I could beat some of the boys, at, you know, some yeah. of the stuff. And it, I think cool. back now it was pretty mean, but they used to line us up at the, before the stadium stairs and the football okay. stadium and they'd make all the boys go first and the girls go second. But if the girls were able to catch up and pass any of the boys, the boys had to do it twice. Ah. Uh. <laughs> and so we would whole ass try yeah, to pass, that was motivation. I passed like six or seven of them. I'm thinking back now, I'm like, oh my God, that was so chauvinist and mean. Yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah. And you I wanted probably... to kind of call those kids back and apologize. <laughs> Yeah. PE teachers would probably get in trouble today for oh setting God, up yes. that oh scenario. My God, yes. I that know, would not be terrible, okay. right? Yeah, it was a different time. That's for sure. It um, was. But I mean, it's interesting, the interplay of things and the motivation and just the fun of trying to different events and things, because like you said, CrossFit didn't exist yet, you know? No. So um, that's pretty cool. It's almost like a decathlon-ish, I don't know. Yeah, putting... like it was just fun. And um, it was kind of for a girl, you know, we have very strong upper bodies. So it was mm. like an opportunity to work that upper body strength, you know, because when you're doing the... Um, marine pull-ups like you know they'd put a hand out and you couldn't touch their hands with your legs it had to be oh, a over the bar you know no swing same with yeah. the push-ups you know their military thumbs in your armpits you know chin to the ground yeah. kind of pull, you know it was very strict and then uh and then we get to go you know compete against other schools in it which was pretty fun so um, that's very cool. But I do think it was kind of like an, an early CrossFit esque kind yeah. of thing. Well, it sounds like it laid a foundation of fitness, you know, mm-hmm. in, a, in a variety of ways. And then come to college, you start lifting and whatnot. And then honeymoon, see the powerlifting event, and away you go in 1999. There it goes. Caught the so, bug, and that was it. <laughs> well, that's actually what I was going to ask. Did it, did it click like that after that first meet? Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Or I was had- there a. Yeah, well, like, uh, um, well, like, I mean, that first year I did my, you know, I did the local meet and then I went to the nationals Mm -hmm. and then I made it to the world team, like all within one year. (laughs) (laughs) I'm only laughing because (laughs) you're making this sound like a really easy thing to do. Like, oh, yeah. It was wild. But, you know, like I struggled a lot, especially with like nerves, meat nerves Mm -hmm. and, um, and the, you know, fitting into a weight class and just. I wasn't yeah. real confident still then. And then, you know, we had never even traveled outside the United States. And all of a sudden, we're flying <laughs> to Finland, you know, yeah. like in the winter. <laughs> so, oh, my like, gosh. Um, it, was, um, it was, it was, I remember being real nervous a lot. Mm. It was real nerve wracking, but apparently I, I liked it enough to stay in it. And yeah. I just kept getting a little bit better and a little bit better at it. But the first few years were not easy. <laughs> And then is it a eleven time IPF world champ? Mm-hmm. I have yeah. uh, four 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 in powerlifting, seven in bench press. Yeah. So then you you mentioned struggles, things of that nature. I know you had a injury that then you were coming back from. Mm-hmm. And that all and also I uh, I've heard you mention in the past, you know, uh I, sadly I forget her name. I should have jotted down her name, but you you lost to another lifter and you were kind of coming back from that but what about uh you have three children correct two, yeah two children sorry two, I, although you could say overplayed. like seven two because children. there's kids here all the time that yeah. aren't mine <laughs> and i mean an iguana right so there you go maybe well, i was a couple was dogs count- you know <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was counting the pets as well but anyway so you have two sons Mm-hmm. How how did that work in terms of you know having your sons and then the, the road the comeback road things of that nature to competitive lifting was it I mean I'm a middle aged man and I'm a father <laughs> of four so okay. I, I've been involved with uh-huh. child rearing for sure yeah. but I never carried the child I never birthed right. the child and that's all I mean having been witness to it four times that's a whole different ball game so right. i can't imagine coming back like physically from that and in, in 
I was trying to look at your championships and look at <laughs> look at your records and time when you had these kids. Like, how did this all work? Well, my first son we adopted, so that was a okay. little easier. <laughs> yeah. We adopted him from Russia, so uh-huh. um, other than the travel. <laughs> well, how old was he? Hard. He was 10 months old. We That's still, him. well, I mean, I'm not going to shortchange I mean, that, though. It's a lot of work. It's like, a 10-month-old. I mean, you're still, <laughs> <laughs> you're still up at night. Like, yeah. yeah. Adoption's strange in that, like, you know, you just go from, I guess maybe it's kind of like what it is to be a dad or something, like you're single and then they say here <laughs> here's your kid and then all of a sudden you're a parent <laughs> like, the world is different yeah, yeah there's not that a lot forward. of like, lead in they're like okay can you come to st petersburg on this day and we said yes <laughs> you know yeah, like, okay you're ready <laughs> here, here you go um then then i we were going through our second adopt the second adoption yeah. to get pregnant with brody so that gotcha. one i i did have the full experience on i think yeah. back now like I don't even know. Like I had, I, I remember I, um, I think I only missed one nationals. I remember I had bro December 29th and then like bench nationals was like February. So I had to try yeah. to get back in shape in like a month and a half. Yeah. You know, I mean, oh it was, my gosh. Ins- it was very hard. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was super, super hard. Yeah. And then, um, so I won and then we were in, um, uh, hungry budapest in may and i flew my mom in to you know hang out with the babies and i oh, that's so think cool. back now and i'm like oh, i can't believe i did that it was i should have just stayed <laughs> home with them like <laughs> but i was just on this competitive yeah. role or like i wasn't willing to miss one and you just never know how long it's gonna last you know how yeah. long are you gonna be number one how much time do you have and so I just didn't want to miss out on the opportunities that my poor mother is, you know, getting up all night with the baby, you know, thinking yeah. like, that was, that was a lot. <laughs> well, you know, as a parent, you need time to yourself too. So <laughs> yeah, you know, it was it, a nice little getaway. But, um, and that year too, um, I remember I took second, uh, to the Russian girl until she mm-hmm. popped positive a few weeks later, you know, yeah. and then I got first, but yeah, that, yeah. Hey, I've I've wondered about that kind of thing that like it, it was probably thrilling that you then find out you get first but on the other hand you didn't get to celebrate first while um, there at the event you know it's it they take all the glory and then you yeah, get like yeah. your first place medal mailed to you like six months <laughs> later and you're like great thanks yeah, <laughs> yeah I I can only imagine i've not been in that scenario but that's probably a letdown but i mean it's yeah. still on the books you still yeah i still get to count it i still got yeah. the medal down my trophy case you know exactly. whatever i won a few more after that so i guess it made it a little better <laughs> i love seeing the development in your gym of the different trophies because mm-hmm. when you gave the tour you pointed out like and this is the weapon stage and yeah. now we get to the acrylics and <laughs> right you know so i know your tour and um you know, I have to ask, out of all of them, so you have several swords. For listeners that are imagining mm-hmm. this in your, in your mind, you know, there's equipment everywhere, and we're going to get to some more specific home gym questions in a second. But to paint the picture, your, your basement has, if I remember, kind of like a reddish color scheme. And then mm-hmm. you've got your medals and various plaques and things. Plaques, yeah. And as you work from, like, left to right, there's, there's some definite, like, weaponry. There's some swords yeah. and things. Daggers. <laughs> what was that about? Like, what? They just went that direction, the different they federations? Went, could, like, well, it started with um, katana swords because <laughs> uh, Titan Support Systems came out with oh. a katana bench shirt. Okay. And so they started giving out katana swords as like the sponsor, and it just okay. kind of kept going. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it Next just did stop with that, you know. You've got just a sword any kind collection. of medieval weaponry we can find is the coolest, you know. And then the so, acrylics, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So do you have a favorite, or they're just all you know awards um, that you've won? One of my favorite ones is this. Well, you know, in the very beginning, it was plaques and like those resin trophies, you know, yeah, that yeah. are like sculptures. I have a bunch of those. And my favorite one is the one from the Chicago Viking Open. 
Um, cause it's this gigantic resin Viking like, <laughs> on this yeah. and it was in Chicago, yeah. um, at B and W gym where, you know, Eddie Cohn's from and a mm-hmm. bunch of other people. And I can remember we went out in Chicago afterwards and I had him by his arm and I'm just walking <laughs> around with my giant ass Viking, awesome. you know, trophy and he's just yeah. cool. Um, that is cool. Uh, so I just, I just think it's, it's neat. I do like the big, like, um, you know, real official trophy cups, you mm-hmm. know the real the big classic giant design, ones, yeah. the classic ones. I lo- I like those also. Um, I don't care for the acrylics too much. Yeah. They're just kind of me. They remind me of a kind of like a private sector business award or, or something. Like yes, you were, well, you were saleswoman of the quarter or mm-hmm. something. Not that you just bench pressed an all time right. world record. Yeah. yeah. So one of them like lights up underneath and changes ah, nice. <laughs> Ooh, just in time you know. for the holidays. Nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't nice. know. If, uh, we, I'm a North Carolina state chair, so we put on a lot of powerlifting, you know, meets mm-hmm. here in North Carolina. And the cost of trophies is just off the charts expensive really? right now, oh, especially my. compared to like, used to be those little resin trophies were super cheap, like, yeah. you know, bowling trophies, everyone had them. <laughs> and now, oh my God, you, you can't even afford to have them anymore. They're so expensive. Yeah. Crazy. I, we brought up Ed Cohen. You just brought him up with the Viking trophy. He said his mother, he had uh, all of his trophies. His mom had them. And he's, he said he doesn't really have many of them. And I joked about sending me one. And he was like, only if you put it on the hood of your car. <laughs> I, so I told him, absolutely. You send me one sure. of your trophies, Ed. It's going on the hood of my car. So we'll see. I, I've yet yeah. to receive it. Ed, if you listen to this, I'm, I'm waiting on your trophy. I'll drive <laughs> around Pittsburgh. So... Your equipment, though, you mentioned North Carolina. You're in Denver of the East. And you moved there, though, and these poor movers had to bring (laughs) a lot. So where did you move from? We moved, uh, we lived outside of Troy in Royal Oak, Michigan. Yeah. I moved there. I grew up in Rochester, and then we moved there in college. So then, uh, you know, this would have been like the mid 90s to late 90s because you said 1999. Yeah. So around that time, this is like before, like I have a rogue rack. This is before like popping online, ordering a rack. And it was an interesting time, I think, in home gym history that you had the knowledge that there was good quality commercial equipment out there. You could go to a commercial gym. There were powerlifting gyms and various gyms where you could go. But on the other hand, if you wanted to buy a good quality piece of equipment for your gym, there weren't that many suppliers. You'd get this Mm -hmm. like, you know, cheap piping type of bench that'll bend under a couple hundred pounds Mm -hmm. so you had to get someone to weld it for you You had to go to a supplier that would actually make these things so how where did you get yours how did you get yours because you your rack i believe you brought when i was watching that gym tour Mm -hmm. you brought a couple other pieces you brought your dumbbell rack a lap machine still lap machine yeah so where did that all come from yeah, well, my husband had the bones of it, um, and it's back from the 80s, actually. Nice. Um, and he he will tell the story where, like, when you wanted fitness equipment, you could go to the fitness store, and they would have a model on the floor, mm-hmm. and then you'd point to which model you wanted, and then they would build it for you, and then yeah. you would go pick it up. So it's not like they had things for you just to pick up and, mm-hmm. you know, take home. So I, it, it was in Troy, Michigan's where he got it from. And I can't remember the name of the, the place, but right. um, most yeah. of that stuff is built by his buddies that were working at Detroit Tool and Die. Yeah. Um, they would get, um, if you wanted to come lift at his gym, it was in his dad's basement. Um, you had to bring a piece of equipment. That was your gym membership. That's cool. So the I guys like would like make their own and bring it in and then that was their membership so, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so we still have the same dumbbell rack the squat rack all that stuff was just handmade you know stuff and i mean still that model good. that's the way it was because here in pittsburgh when i buy old you know i'll buy someone's home gym to try to get some collectible weights or collectible yeah. things um some vintage weights and things that i want to restore research I'll see, I'll, I'll end up with their rack or their bench and it's from Penn Barbell that was in Penn Hills Mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh, or it's from Pitt Barbell and the same idea. You'd go in there and pick out what you want and they'd make it for you. So, um, yeah, there's something to be said about that. I think coming full circle that some of the most bougie, like, uh, you know, high end 
power racks and things that you can buy right now are customized racks that you look online and then you get your sales mm -hmm. rep and you pick out that like, well, I want this color scheme and I want this mm -hmm. and want that. So it's kind of interesting that it's come around. Have you in your gym, I know from Ashton's tour that, uh, you got a squat, a belt squat machine built mm -hmm. fairly recently and then yeah. some strength go plates. Mm hmm that you brought in you got the captain americas over there oh yeah you, you know i was really paying attention on this tour jim yeah so you were i i but i'm curious are there any favorites are there any like anything that if your sons were in there they'd be like oh well that's mom's like anything favorite in there that you absolutely adore um gosh that's hard to say i do love my belt squat machine state of the arc made it out of south carolina and they are mm -hmm. like similar to what we were saying where they'll we gave them like this, you know, our gym's very small and most yeah. belt squat machines are huge. And so we basically gave them the dimensions of the space yeah. we wanted to fit in and the heights of everyone in our gym. Mm -hmm. So they knew like whether they could fit it in there and then how long the ropes need to be for this tall to the shortest people. They were amazing. So that I that is one of my, my favorite machines. And then mostly I just love accessory stuff. Yeah. Um, like I love our transformer bar, our duffalo bar. Yeah. Um, we have a, uh, I love my, my, for Christmas, my son got me a log press. Oh, a that's fun. Log press, which I yeah. love because I just love mixing up the mm -hmm. workout with all sorts of different accessories. We just got this, um, and it's so funny. It's called a wide body bench. I saw your you post on that? Instagram. Yeah. And um, the, I never would have considered buying this, but I'm really yeah. having so much fun with it right it's now. It's got like a, they almost look like wings on it that, yeah. that kind of come out. Garage Dim Experiment, who produces Garage Dim Radio mm -hmm. and produces a show, he shared your, yes. I'm pretty sure he shared your he did. post. That's where I saw yeah. it. So yeah. And, yeah, it's got the the arms come off or on, but you can like okay. put them at different angles. So you <laughs> can do like a shoulder press. I was doing some preacher curls with it the other day, and then the floor yeah. presses and stuff. And I wouldn't have ever thought really to purchase something like that, but it yeah. really is so much fun. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. we got it. Well, for the garage gym competition, I just did some floor presses like old school you lay on uh -huh. the floor you roll it over your face and then you right. press it um and i had done that maybe the day before i saw that reel with you and i was like oh that looks a lot more comfortable and easy to, yeah. <laughs> to do a well, i've floor never press. done floor presses because of what you said you know i've never done them just because it's hard on your body it's jarring it hurts your elbows like it just it's not real yeah. safe um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i just i like experimenting with the old school lifts so uh -huh. I haven't filmed it yet because it's humbling, but have you ever done a pullover and press? That was like the first bench press. No. It basically, you lay on your bench and mm -hmm. you got to have room. So it's, it's best to do it outside of a rack. And then you put the barbell behind where your bench is, because mm -hmm. this was a time and era, you know, 1910s, 20s, 30s before uprights. Yeah. It would just be a bench, a utility bench. And you reach back and grab uh -huh. it and do a pullover and then uh -huh. press. And huh. that's how the first bench press has started. Yeah, that makes my shoulders and cry. <laughs> it's, yeah, I was going to say the humbling thing is that like, oh, wait, I don't even know if I have the mobility for this. Like, yeah. I, you know, it's I need to lower my I, bench I know somehow. <laughs> yeah. Well, the interesting thing with it is that, you know, this was a huge lift for classic strongmen like Arthur Saxon and George Hackensmith and various others, but it became controversial because of the belly toss. So some mm. lifters figured out you could pull over and sure. you could set it towards your abdomen and then uh -huh. basically flex your hips almost like a belly hip bench. thrust. Yeah. And yeah, do it was called the belly toss. It became controversial. A young Bob Hoffman who had just opened up your barbell he fought against it with the aau and finally mm -hmm. i think in 1939 i read they they outlawed the belly toss no more belly toss mm -hmm. so like then the bench arch. <laughs> i was just gonna ask you is there a belly toss of 2023 it's the is, arch for it's sure the arch? okay yeah <laughs> that's where i was heading with this historical connection well, so there used to be a rule where you couldn't touch the bar i uh, thinking of belly benching you know ipf had a rule where you couldn't touch below your sternum and you couldn't ah. hit your belt Okay. They did have like a, a belly benching sort of <laughs> in there. One, yeah, the legacy of the belly toss. Yeah. 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 
I, I'm not going to recreate the belly toss. I'm going to work on the pullover and press, though. And, um, yeah, the arching. What's your take on that? That seems to be a viral video like kind of thing that I see. I'll oh, be scrolling, right. yeah. and I'll see someone. Um, I don't know who they are, but I'll see someone who has, like, whatever, an inch range of motion because yeah. of their arch. I mean, is um, that well, I think, possible? I don't know. I th- but an arch is, I think, important just for good setup and mm-hmm. to save your shoulders, just to put you in a good position. I think it's important to have an arch. Um, now, if you're going to move the bar an inch, that's just, I mean, it's just not impressive. <laughs> like, yeah. You're not really ex- showing strength. You're showing your ability to contort your body into an event. And honestly, like, the only one that can really do it is smaller people because they're the only ones that can get their hands, you know, where they can use them all the way out to the rings and have True. not much range of motion. So it really is something that's only advantageous, really, to smaller people. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, it's within the rules. So. Yeah. It is what it is, unless, you know, like the IPF just made the rule about the elbow bend, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm, I haven't spent a lot of time watching what's going on with that, but I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting idea. I don't know how well you can execute that rule, but the boys at Massonomics, I'm sure can explain it to us. They had some content on it. Uh, I love Massonomics and I know you've been on there and, um, yeah, they they had some stuff on the elbow rule, so I, I'll go back on their posts and figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, I just um, I haven't really seen like any of the competitions, yeah. you know, since then. It, it, I would I would like to go back and watch them and see like how effective that rule was, or yeah. if it's being um, equitably um, enforced. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's been fast history when it comes to the bench press because of what you mentioned and other lifts because of being equipped and how uh, you know in the 90s equip that was like you just said well it's within the rules well at the time it was within the rules there wasn't a separation Mm yet you know equipped and raw so then you've gone the path of not uh, well i guess i should ask have you competed equipped well, uh, in my earlier years, that's all there was. Yeah, so you so did. So I completed uh, equipped yeah. powerlifting all the way up to, I think, 2012, maybe. Gotcha. 11 or 12. And then you switched over. Was it just less yeah, hassle? So the, like what? Well, I've always been pretty strong raw. Like, yeah. honestly, I've never, I was never great in the equipment. Like, I was okay. getting several pounds out of it, not many pounds. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and it's just, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't really spend a lot of time working in it, in it because I didn't enjoy it. I mean, it hurts. Um, yeah. And um, so, like, I my plan was just to go, we had, um, and I can't remember his name, forever in bench press, we had one guy that no matter what would go raw. Huh. Um, he called himself the Superman. Gosh, I wish I could remember his name. <laughs> uh, but he would nice. actually be in the top three, you know, against all the equip lifters. He's just, he was super strong and just yeah. not doing the shirt. And um, and I just like, it, it, it bangs up your body quite a bit. And I just didn't enjoy it. So I was to the point where I was going like, you know what, I'm just going to show up raw. Because we started doing some... Um, of the competitions, we would do like our first, our opener raw and then put on oh, okay. the shirt for the next two um, to guarantee a first lift, but also kind of show off what your raw strength is to <laughs> everybody else. Nice. Um, so we'd already kind of started doing some of that. And then mm-hmm. I was just like, I'm not enjoying this anymore. Why well, I want to continue on. So I'm just going to take it all off. And then kind yeah. of miraculously raw kind of came. Yeah. Um, I think kind of came after like the big um, stock market drop, I think in 2008 or so. I, it's I have an a, interesting my, correlation. I do think it correlates <laughs> somewhat to money. Cause if you've ever had that's to buy true. equipment, that stuff's expensive. I was even just something simple like knee sleeves. I was like, Oh man, do I want to oh, spend a hundred dollars on knee yeah, sleeves? Like 60, ah, and the, and that was like cheap knee sleeves. That wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't like I was going for some $300 pair of knee sleeves. Right. Right. So, Oh man, I've been debating these. He sleeves. Anyway, back on topic. So, <laughs> so um, I, I'm commiserating that yes, I, yeah, I could see that you save save a couple pennies if you're going without the equipment. Well, and it opened the sport up to a whole new population of people. Because honestly, sure. like that equipment, you have to know or know somebody that knows how to put it on and how you use it. It's not intuitive, really. I That's mean, you true. really have got to know how to use it, and so. 
um, by opening it up to Rob, I mean, most people know how to lift in some way or can find someone near them to show them. So it really, I mean, it exploded our sport. Like our sport had been stagnant for years and then it just went nuts once they opened it to raw. I remember the first raw nationals. I can't remember. I think it, I didn't go to the very first one, but I told them, I said, they were worried about not getting enough people. I said, you're not prepared for the number of people that are going to sign up. For uh-huh. this. I said, I'm telling you, <laughs> it's going to be huge. And it was our largest nationals ever. And I think the people were like lifting into 12, one o'clock in the morning, oh, you know, because wow. they just weren't prepared yeah, they didn't for the, the turnout. Know what was going to happen. Yeah. No. Oh, man. I, it, it's interesting the ebb and flow of things and how that opened things up. So then going forward, um, you're involved with USAPL, correct? Yeah. And then, you know, what's, I think you've served on a board with them or you do. What's your involvement? Um, state chair. State and chair. And I'm on the international okay. committee. That's right. Um, it's not board committee. Yeah. I'm using when the wrong we term. We were with the IPF. I was on a yeah. couple of the IPF committees also, okay. but that all went away. So, yeah. So, how does that work? I mean, you just, um, it, you just help to form the regulations and things. What do you do as a committee? Well, we're member? mostly working on having USA powerlifting events in other countries. So right now I'm okay. working on um, an event we're hoping to hold in England in October. Oh, very and cool. then we've had a few in Australia. We've had one in Vietnam, mm-hmm. I think China, a uh, couple of Philippines, I think maybe. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think right now we have something like 30 countries signed on membership wow. wise, like 30 different countries. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's reaching out and putting together, helping put the, to, the hardest part is figuring out the drug testing in yeah. other countries. And well, that's where I was going to go sure, next. Yeah. So. Yeah. Making sure that they're suitable places and it's being performed correctly and all that sort of stuff. So, because when it comes to, um, the IOC and WADA and mm-hmm. drug testing, there's, you know, seems to be this um, just kind of difference with drug testing when it comes to WADA and IOC and powerlifting federations and your experience. And I heard you talk about this kind of uh, difference of, of things in terms of uh, bringing powerlifting possibly to the Olympics. And will that ever happen? Will it... Not, no, I, I mean, it's never going to happen. <laughs> it's never going to happen. No. It's just not going to work out. <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> they don't because, want, they want sports that are going to bring in monster money. That's just yeah. not, and it's just not, not going to attract it. I don't, I don't think so. I think, um, I mean, the IPF has been trying to do it since I started for 20 plus years. They've every year we would jump through hoops where they wanted this uh-huh. committee in order to be IOC compliant. And then we do this and then they want you to change this. And then every year there was a list of things that we would need to go through to be considered. <laughs> yeah. And every year hoops. it changed, you know, and it just, um, no, it's not happening. <laughs> it's just not happening. It's going to be a separate so. entity. Well, I think, um, it's interesting how the Olympics work that the home country has a say in certain events and what events get played or not played, mm-hmm. depending on the makeup of their country and how much they value certain events. Uh, well, so it makes me wonder, like, if it, if the Olympics are hosted by the right country that is really strong into powerlifting, could it be enough? I don't know. You never know. I think, um, I honestly, I honestly just think it all comes down to money. Yeah, I, I wouldn't argue if with you. you got the right sponsors <laughs> with enough money, I think it would yeah. happen. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's um, countries like Qatar that brought the World Cup and spent a lot of money on it. And they just coincidentally happened to spend a whole lot of money on strength strength sports and strength athletes. Bodybuilding, yeah. And bodybuilding and things. So who knows? Maybe they'll start. Who knows? Never say never, right? Backing a lot of powerlifting. Well, are you going to be still powerlifting in 20 years when that happens? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Good. Maybe not at this level, but I'll yeah. still be out there doing it. Let's see, I'll be 70. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to ask you concerning longevity. When I look at some of these old time strong men and strong women, um, you know, they perform, 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 but they have tricks of the trade. They, you know, they, 
they'll have an implement that involves grip more than weight. And that's kind of like a, a way to get around just taxing the body. What do you have any secrets to longevity? What, uh, you know, recovery methods that you use or just consistency in terms of training? Like what's, how have you been able to keep doing this? You make it look so easy. Like I said before. <laughs> um, well, I think it's probably a lot of things. One is like, you know, my husband's way into it. So I think that helps when like both partners are kind of in it together. You know, I think, uh, um, that makes a big difference because sure. you're very supporting and you understand the time and dedication and you don't, aren't disgruntled about, <laughs> about it in <laughs> any way, you know, you kind of yeah. share this passion and you don't, you know, you, you know, he, he wouldn't get, I wouldn't get upset or he wouldn't get upset for buying to buy new more gym equipment instead of something <laughs> else, you know? <laughs> so I, I think having that unity definitely helps. I think that a lot of it's probably programming and just being smart and listening to your body about yeah. stuff. We've always trained way differently than everybody else. So, um, I think a lot of it's just how we've, and, and a lot of it has to do with like you train that's best for your lifestyle, you know, your work schedule, your, mm -hmm children's schedule um but as i've gotten older i got way better at sleep and nutrition for sure compared to my late 20s early 30s yeah um i think that's helped a lot but a lot of it's just being very very smart about training and um and building and rebuilding. I mean, we, we build to a peak and then you drop back and then you build to a new peak mm -hmm. and you drop back, you know, it's that rocket science yeah. by any means. Um, so I just think a lot of it is just the love of it, the community, the people, um, and that it's like very much uh, something our household does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because both of your sons have lifted and mm -hmm. competed and your husband competes as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, your household is like, the strong house on the block. Yeah, right. Everyone's <laughs> always like, because we have, you know, we have five people that come work out with us every day at oh four o'clock. It's uh, it's, it's our neighbor down the street. He owns mm -hmm. the Chick Fil A, and uh, Donovan's <laughs> friend from college moved down here. He comes down, and then a friend of ours um, from the world team moved actually moved here, and he comes over. And so there's usually four or five of us. There's always cars parked out in the front of our house, <laughs> so it always looks like we got a party going on. Yeah. You know, here. And there's no gym dues. They don't have to bring equipment like uh, what oh, you mentioned. they have to volunteer at the powerlifting events we put uh, in. Nice. <laughs> they so have to those run are the, the gym dues. Tables and stuff. Yeah. That's that's a cool trade off. I mean, that's kind I of think fun. So. Yeah. That's very cool. I when I brought up longevity, I thought you were gonna say uh, using a football to warm up with. Ah, that's, that's, that's like your trademark. That form and technique is definitely probably number one yeah. for sure. For yeah. those that don't know, I mean, it was one of the first things I think I saw like a video of you talking about. I don't even remember how long ago. And it was that you take a football of different, uh, I guess, firmness or softness mm -hmm. and you put it under the uh, lower part of your back, right? Yeah, Whenever that's... you're uh, getting ready to bench. When I warm up, yeah, I do it um, yeah. on off days also, but it's how I'm able to get into position just because I'm not. Yeah. I'm not flexible. I'm not bendy. I got to work well, at it. <laughs> whether it's at home, gym con or elsewhere down the road, when I meet you in person, I would like you to sign a football for my gym. I'm, yeah, I'm going to have too. a Jen Thompson football in my gym. That's my There's goal. There's a few of them out there, but not a lot. <laughs> nice. Well, I will have one of them. I think that would be cool. Because I've it's actually just, had uh, people show up to yeah. competitions and seminars with footballs nice. that they want me to sign, which <laughs> is so cool. <laughs> That's really cool. And I, yeah. mean, I get it because I want one. So, yeah, it's because I think it's an original and very accessible idea. I'm a big fan. Being a home gym owner, I think it's a, a cool do-it-yourself, cheap kind of, uh, kind of trick. They didn't have foam rollers back then yeah. when we were getting started. We had footballs. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And you've got yours in your gym, a couple of them. You mm -hmm. got nice little holders on the wall. So yep. got your footballs displayed. Proudly displayed, yep. <laughs> That's awesome. So then everyone still looks at me weird though. When we go to a competition, I pull my football out in the warm up room, they're all like, What the heck is she doing? <laughs> still hasn't caught on to that level? No, I mean, oh. has not. Oh well. Next time, just tell them, look, guys, like, I, I have guys coming up and asking me to autograph their footballs. Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing, you know? It's, it's not to be shunned. It's not to be looked away from. Right. So then going forward, I mean, 
I guess I should ask this two part and we're going to wrap up here soon. I appreciate your time, Jen, is that when you started out, was the goal in IPF world? What was, what was your goal when you, after that meet and you start and you're thinking, man, I'm getting into this. What were some of your goals starting oh, out? World champion was right that up was, there. That was there. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to be one. I had no idea I would get so many. <laughs> yeah. um, and it took me, uh, two years to get it. It wasn't like right away, mm -hmm. but, um, it was definitely, I just kind of thought it was neat that once you're a world champion, you can always say you're a world champion at that yeah. kind of like being the president, you know, you're yep. always the president once you're at one time. And You've I just got thought, a title. God, that is like the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. So definitely that was like, that was the ultimate dream, the goal, the records and stuff were side side things, but the, mm -hmm. The number one thing was to be able to call myself a world champion. Very cool. So then fast forward, you are world champion lifter, Jen Thompson. What are the goals now? Honestly, um, I want to be as competitive in the open as long as I can. Um, I have nine national titles in powerlifting. God, I want 10. <laughs> It just sounds Nine better. Is just such a terrible number to <laughs> end on, you know? Yeah. Um, if it, I mean, the girls, I mean, the girls these days, I mean, they're wicked strong. Yeah. Um, especially the college kids coming up and then even the girls in their 20s. Um, like, it's, I feel like I almost feel so proud of, like, our numbers and how just strong we are yeah. to come from a time where like we couldn't even fill a weight class up with women wow. you know you'd have several weight classes in a flight because you couldn't mm -hmm. fill it up and we were the beginning of the meet and they would just kind of get us out of the way before the real lifting starts and yeah. now we're part of the show like yeah. people come to watch it and mm -hmm. um i'm just so so proud um that we've established that in, in this sport. Um, so honestly, the meets are more fun for me because there's not a lot of pressure. No one expects me, honestly, um, to dominate anymore. <laughs> so, um, they're always, they know I'm going to do well on the bench, you yeah. know, but, um, outside of that, it's, you know, let's just see. And so mm -hmm. like at the Arnold this year, you know, it was all by dots, you know, and I took fourth out of everybody, which mm -hmm. I was super proud of, yeah. you know, 50, almost 50 top four, fourth best female in the country. That's not Heck bad. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, I, I think I can't, I think I have a, uh, the ability to grab one more national title if everything aligns correctly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I would really like that. Um, and then, yeah, just to, to stay, I feel like our sport is in such a wonderful place right now as a lifter, like there's prize money, there's mm -hmm. people watching, we're lifting in these amazing events with huge crowds cheering you on. Like it's the most wonderful experience ever. Um, so I just want to, like, I just want to stay in it and, and, and get that as long as I can. <laughs> Heck yeah. I think that's very cool because I mean, your life has changed over your career. You used to have, you know, little tiny babies. Now you have young men yeah. that are coming to your gym to work out. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure your sleep hopefully has improved somewhat from. Oh, it's way back. I have so much more time had... now. I was just exactly. thinking about that today. I was like, gosh, like we did, oh. you know, yard work and we did a few little extra things today. And I'm like, we would have never had time for this before. <laughs> 10 minutes before we got on here, I was putting my two-year-old back to bed mm -hmm. because she and my four-year-old came out and they were doing some kind of goofy game together. And yeah. I was like, guys, it's time. Go to sleep. <laughs> I will tell you, though, I miss that so much. Yeah. Anytime I see those pictures of my boys when they're really small, it almost like makes me so sad because I just miss those moments when they were little and they loved yeah. to do fun things and they thought you were so amazing and you laughed and not that they're not great now. It's just yeah. different. You For know, sure. I just, I miss the um, cuteness and the cuddles. <laughs> I don't want to put down my own podcast, but mm -hmm. my oldest son, who's nine, he was about to go to bed. I said, Hey, you know, you want to stop down? Cause he seemed curious and he came down to take a look at the setup, what uh -huh. I had going on. And I mean, he was like, Oh, wow, you know, what's, well, what's this? I was telling him, well, this is the microphone, headphones, whatever. And I mean, in his mind, he's pretty sure that like, 
this is going out to the world. <laughs> you know, it's and I have to, viral. <laughs> yeah. So I have to like, I'm not putting down my own podcast here. I mean, I'm very proud of what I do here on Garage Gym Radio and Home Gym History. But I had to break it to him that like none of your friends are going to hear this, son. <laughs> like it's not. <laughs> None of your friends even know what powerlifting is. Like yeah, it's one day. Yeah. One day. One day. One day. So I mean, that's I couldn't agree with you more. I feel blessed to have all of my kids and uh my most athletic is my oldest daughter, who's six, and she is an inspiration to me the way she comes in my gym and does crazy stuff. And <laughs> yeah. So I'll definitely be showing her some footage of you. And I I, I think you you know, you're, you've you laid some of that foundation from just even our conversation tonight, seeing the difference in your career. You had a big part in that. So, you know, I can't tell you how much I admire and respect you, Jen. So I, I want to uh, thank you so much for coming on. And again, mention to the listeners that you can find Jen on Instagram. You have your own podcast. You have YouTube channel, two of them, I believe. Still two of them, yeah, or just pretty one? Pretty much one now. Pretty much one? <laughs> the other okay. one's kind of inactive. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you can still subscribe to it. It's fine. You know, so we'll put all of your links and whatnot. <laughs> uh, do you have anything coming up that you'd like to promote or anything else to mention? Um, we got lots of fun things coming up. Actually, I'm leaving for Miami Friday, we have our uh, Iron and Stone tour we're doing down there. Probably be, you know, after this is um, yeah. out there. Um, but it's kind of like a fun strength weekend um, oh, cool. with Sisters of Iron and um, Michael uh, um, De La Palma and uh, Jen Ratzinger and uh, Kristen Lander and um, and Daniela Mello was a big power lifter. So tell me more about that, if you don't mind. That sounds interesting. Yeah, we're um, well, we're raising money, um, and I can't remember the charity's name, which I feel really bad about right now. Cause, but, but it's, it's for really a good long. cause. Yeah. But it's it's to help kids um, that exit out of the foster system. It helps oh, them kind of wow. get on their feet, you know, because there's yeah. really kind of they let them go, and they're like, okay, here you go. Yeah. Um, so we're doing um, one day at CrossFit Kendall of Miami, which is going to be squat, bench, and deadlift, and then we have um, okay. mindset training and nutrition and then the next day we're going to battle axe gym to learn how to do some um strongman stuff and we're oh, having a cool. barbecue so <laughs> thank goodness your son got you a log nice right, right. <laughs> you can kind so, of get some reps in um, before you get down there yeah i'm really stoked i love trying new things so yeah, i'm excited cool. about that it's more like you know just kind of bring everyone together for a sense of community and then yeah. um then we're i'm doing a few seminars coming up okay. i've got um one in uh, MPG Fitness outside of Chicago, okay. and then Trueborn Fitness in Atlanta. Those are in um, August okay. um, coming up. So, oh, I'm going to Grand Cayman for my 50th birthday. <laughs> Ooh, nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, listeners, if you happen to be in Grand Cayman and That's you right. see a very strong lady, mm -hmm. just my There she in. is. There she and is. And then we have Bench Nationals in August in um, Phoenix. Okay. And then Raw National September in Memphis. So, so in terms of competition, that's what you're eyeing up. Nice. Yeah, getting, just getting started trained for it. So I'll tell you um, what, you've got quite a schedule. That's... I do. Like every time I'm like, oh, it's not so bad. And then I add some things in there. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I, yeah. I looked at my husband, Donovan. I'm like, so I added one more seminar for November. And that's it for 2023. We're done. <laughs> do you have a picture or a video of you bench pressing your husband? I, I do. Oh, have you posted it? Is it like a public yeah, thing? Yeah, it was a while ago. We okay. did it for like a charity event yeah. um, in um, in Colorado. We raised some money for suicide awareness. Okay. And um, so for part of that, um, we were we were just we were on uh, Twitch TV. Yeah, yeah. And you know, raising money and whatever. And so um, we were doing kind of different feats of strength. So I practiced it at home first oh, to make sure I could do it. <laughs> And then we, um, I we, admire we and respect it. your husband because, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's just doing his thing seemingly and he's, you know, supports you and, very much uh, so, you know, and is game for a good cause to be bench pressed. That's, mm -hmm. that is, right. that's well, a catch. I've seen, I saw, uh, I think it was on Twitch or TikTok or whatever. It was a guy yeah. doing it, bench pressing a girl. Ah. And I was like, 
We're going to flip this. One of these switches around. Oh, that's <laughs> perfect. It's historic. I'm going to message yeah. you. I'll, I'll track right. down. If you tell me, I'll, I'll send it on over. <laughs> when I was reading up on some things throughout history for this episode, there are plenty of photographs that I saw of the great Sandwina and others lifting their husbands and lifting various men overhead. So I'll, I'll send you some of those. You can do like a mashup yeah. of the historical uh, lifts of their husband overhead with yours. That'd be cool. Yeah. So, Maybe yeah. I'll repost it. And actually there's a good thing for us to end out on with that. There's a quote from Sandwina and this connects to you as well, because I know that next to your gym, you have a bar, correct? Not like a commercial bar, but you have like a home, like a little bar setup. Uh, yes. I saw mm -hmm. on a gym tour. Mm -hmm. I don't yep, know if yep. you still have that, but I oh, think yes, you did. We do. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. So uh, she said, there's nothing to beat a good glass of beer or a fine bottle of wine. I think it's nonsense when athletes avoid these things. So there you go. Uh -huh. There you are. Long history of lifting and enjoying a beverage sometimes in moderation, of course. Sometimes you just need one. <laughs> That's right. Hey, thanks so much, Jen. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. That was great. I enjoyed it.